Thank you very much. It's a special pleasure to be here in Heidelberg on this occasion. The University of Heidelberg has played a very important role in the Human Brain Project since its beginning, not at least through the key contributions of uh, the late uh, Professor Karl Heinz Meyer. So, brain research is a very popular topic nowadays. And the Human Brain Project is actually the first in a wave of large brain projects. As you can see along this timeline, there have been some brain projects of very large size before 2013, and then comes the wave, with the Human Brain Project being the first, and US Brain, Japan, Japan Brain Minds, and other initiatives as you will see here. Now, the first release of platforms that could be said to represent an infrastructure came March 2016. At that point in time, the Human Brain Project had been functional for 30 months and had developed six prototypes, prototype platforms. These platforms were neuroinformatics, dealing with um, organizing and managing data and brain analysis and tools for analysis. The brain simulation platform, working with models of the brain, simulating these models. Medical informatics, high performance analytics and computing, required for virtually all of this. Neuromorphic computing, using brain inspired computing, and neurobotics. Now let's look at these six together. They, of course, need to connect. So data, for example, coming from one platform is stored through services provided by another one. Analytical tools are running on machines elsewhere. Modeling simulation can go all the way to robotics to have an environment for the models, etc. So these things are connected. And in this context, eBrains is our concept for bringing the platforms together. But eBrains is a bit more than that. So let's look at the definition. eBrains, a research e-infrastructure for brain research, helping the research community collect, analyze, share, integrate, and model data about the brain with the aim of better understanding the functioning of the human brain and its diseases. So at this event, we will introduce the eBrains. We could call it the pre-launch. It's not a release of everything, but it's a release of a first set of services. More services, more tools services will be released regularly uh, over the coming three years, many over the next half year. All these services in eBrains are targeting external users. This is the place to go if you are outside the Human Brain Project. Of course, in addition, there is a Human Brain Project website. Everybody is welcome there as well. That is a project website. It follows the needs of the project, so to speak, and external users can go there as well. And everything which is being developed will be accessible at one stage or another through the Human Brain Project website. But when it is finished and ready to go out to the community, it is in eBrains. So what do we have? We have a basic infrastructure, of course, provided by some of the platforms you just saw on the pictures, where tools and services are running, and the number of data assets. So for example, that data with metadata describing the, the data uh, are existing in this data assets layer, used in the number of analytical workflows. Features are extracted from these data, used in the context of building models of the brain, performing simulations. At a number of different sites, in Europe, in the Human Brain Project, and also now outside the Human Brain Project through the services provided by eBrains. So this infrastructure will include what we call fair data services, defined in a moment, brain atlases for data integration, brain modeling simulation, closed loop artificial intelligence and robotics, medical brain activity data, interactive high performance computing and neuromorphic computing. So eBrains will support a wide range of research methodologies, facilitate collaborative research, data sharing, integrate a number of ICT services, and provide practical working solutions for those who do experiments, those who do computational modeling, and clinicians. The project and work in progress is at the humanbrainproject.eu website. 
the e-brain stopped EU is powered by the HPP with the working solutions for the scientific community presented at e-brain stopped EU. At this point in time, we have a taster of what is coming soon. You will find find data, share data, and brain atlases, which is a small part of what eBrains will contain. Let's take a brief look at this. So share data, find data, that is about comprehensive tools and services for organizing and managing data. In, in the little video there, you could see the traffic to one of the supercomputer centers where these data are stored. They are then discoverable through a search, and they have DOIs that allows the data to be identified and cited correctly. So the key instrument there is the eBrain's knowledge graph, which is then the place where all the metadata are organized. You can go in there, search according to different methods, find what's available at locations or according to certain specifications, and uh, pick up those data, make use of the data, and cite them, just as if you had found the publication, but this is much, much deeper, it is the real data behind the publications. The eBrain's brain atlases, the logic is the same as in geography. Who would do geography today without all the fantastic services we have on the web? And of course, this is, is what we're aiming for in the brain, and we do have it to some extent already. So the eBrain's brain atlases, that is the way into the future for looking into and organizing brain data. Here's a video produced at uh, Forschungszentrum Jülich, a group of Katrin Amunds, Timo Dickscheid, uh, where we are looking at here the big brain, which is a very, very large, high detail, high resolution, three-dimensional volume of the human brain that you can navigate and look into the details, and that they are working on to divide into different pieces, as if we were looking back in history to geography before the Earth was completely mapped. You had preliminary maps of various kinds, improving all the time up to a level where you have full insight. There are also the tools that allows you to navigate inside these atlases and to pick up information at different locations and identify what there is at a certain area, region in the brain to compare with other available results and to create new combinations of uh, data that you otherwise would not be able to dig out by going to classical literature research. So a particular challenge in neuroscience is that we have to deal with data from many levels, all the way from the smallest picometer, nanometer level up to a whole brain, the space dimension, and the time dimension from picoseconds, the molecular level speed up to the years, processes of aging, for example. Many modalities, many scales, this is very challenging. And if we're going to understand the brain at some level, we need to integrate, we need to deal with data integration, combining data in different sources, providing users with a unified view. More and more important as the volume of data are increasing, of course, not only the focus in our field, it's a general topic today, and with numerous challenges. The FAIR principles are in this regard very helpful, and the, having the data findable, accessible, uh, let's say interpretable, and reusable are key aspects that we adhere to. So the culture of knowledge sharing is well developed. We publish papers, we convey messages about what we have learned. But knowledge builds on data, and the culture of sharing data is lagging a little bit behind. This is what we're doing in the HPP Neurodata Management, expressed through the find data and share data services. Creating large repositories of organized and curated data from HPP and other sources. They're also open today for other projects to enter their data in these systems. Accompanied by workflows to make it possible to share the data and teams of curators that can help with this. We have a three-tier curation process, as you will see in a moment. And the whole logical force is that, in this way, the classical way of studying, uh, of working in science, from questions via experiments and data to analysis, interpretation, and conclusion, ending in papers, usually focusing on interpretation and conclusions, will shift to a focus on the real data. 
this is the key aspect. And this is absolutely essential in order for us to have reproducible research and to make better use of the data and see new opportunities. As of course, um, again, not only in neuroscience, as European Open Science Cloud uh, is actually dealing with this as a broader level, and we could call ourselves an instance of this and contributes, of course, to the European Open Science Cloud in this, um, in this regard. So enabling data sharing is key. To extract key features relevant for modeling and simulation, how can you do it if you're only going to read a paper? To improve the analysis, put together new combinations of data, add data, which is attractive for experimentalists and clinicians. To have future data sharing impact factors, which is important for everyone who wants to build a career, they have to start sharing the data. There's no other way. So we are building trust and professionalizing the sharing of, of data. So here's a brief overview. Experiments, model, simulation, the research data are stored in the HPP data storage, the future eBrains data storage, curated in a process that goes through multiple steps. The first step is an initial data upload where some basic metadata are tagged to the data. All these metadata goes into what we call a knowledge graph. We add information about where in the brain the data are from, and we can do a deeper curation and add more specific metadata, increasing the value of the data. The search can be text, or it can be a spatial search to look for locations and see what's available. The search result is then taken to the tools and workflow environment for viewing and analysis in different contexts for prediction, modeling, simulation, neuromorphic computing, robotics. The shared data process is uh, going through multiple steps. There is a concrete submission, there is a review process, an acceptance process, curation integration process. Data goes out through the eBrains find data, and one can also add more in-depth data at a later stage. It's comparable to publishing a paper, it's a much faster process, and it gives a lot of additional value. The shared data has a number of very concrete steps in order to be implemented. These are all working, all teams are in place, and we have a machinery, the first in the world for neuroscience in this regard, that can really uh, deal with the challenge of creating findable, accessible, interpretable, and reusable data. Here's the eBrain's Find Data user interface. You can, for example, see now there are 479 researchers that have contributed data. These data exists in 571 data sets containing in the range of 50,000 to 100,000 files total from 75 uh, so-called projects, which are huge collections of data. And these data have a so-called fairness score, meaning that they are to a high degree possible to find. That depends on how much metadata you have to access, meaning that you can, you can really get them. They are there for you to access and so on, interpret and reuse. So this is the best score we have for our data. And in some instances, we don't get any higher than this, but it's a good start as well. We have licenses attached to the data that the user chooses exactly what are the conditions that will apply and chooses a Creative Commons license, uh, which will then, for example, always require that the data must be cited when they are used. This requires collaborations among the institutions that does the curation, ontology, and also the knowledge graph development, shown on the left, and the institutions dealing with the storage and the computing, shown on the right. And to make this work, you need support. So we have a high-level support team surrounding these services. And uh, at this point in time, if you go to the HPP website, there is a little button called Get Some Help. And that is your route into this team. This will soon also go now on the eBrains portal. And then people can not only access services, but they can also connect to the ones that have developed the services. This is useful for both sides, the feedback aspect and getting help to make sure these things work. HPP has an infrastructure voucher program. This is one of the or many openness measures to attract new groups and projects. And uh, the target groups are both academic and clinical, pharma and industry in Europe and also elsewhere in the world. Uh, we had 15 voucher projects funded uh, February this year. 
there was an announcement September this year or a deadline uh, September this year, announcements in February, and there's more coming. We also have a number of open calls, currently nine open calls, deadline December 2 to 11, with funding available in each call for 450 to 1,000 or to 1.3 million euro. So these are examples of the key openness measures for the project. And the partnering projects, of course, 23 of them at the moment, recruited to primarily Flag ERA, which is a new funding mechanism demonstrating how the HPP has influenced uh, the total situation for uh, neuroscience in Europe. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Jan. I think we have time for one question from the audience. Otherwise, I would like to remind you that there will be a Q&A session at, after all the speakers have talked in the second half of today's event. Thank you, Jan. Uh, this is very exciting. So we're not members of the HPP currently. We're coming from the Erasmus MC in Rotterdam precisely because we're curious about the Brains platform. And in the context of uh, the call for expression of interest that has just been released, we are uh, intending to work together with the developers of the simulator platform Arbor uh, and so to make the best use of, uh, of the Brain upcoming platforms. I just checked the site and it, it's promising, uh, but uh, it says here in the bottom, it's like coming soon to eBrain, so additional services yep. uh, will include brain modeling and simulation and supercomputing access. Yep. And I wanted to, to ask, you know, what, what um, what would you recommend to us? That's question number one. Like, uh, how, do we, how do we best uh, create, you know, synergies uh, as an external partner? And uh, the second one is, um, uh, so, do you imagine a workflow uh, that, that we can, you know, integrate uh, in this context? Thank you very much for these uh, very important questions. So, first of all, this is a, a launch, a pre-launch. There are many services coming. If we look to what you bring up, uh, yes, eBrains will be able to tell how you, from the outside, can connect to services of the kind you mentioned. It doesn't at the moment. At this point in time, the humanrainproject.eu website is the place to go. You, you'll find essential information there as well. It is not prepared 100% for the outside because it's a project site. Uh, but that is the way to go. What is the general recommendation for everyone who has these kind of uh, thoughts and ideas and want to connect is simply to use the high-level support team to connect. There is a support function. There is also, as, you, as we emphasize at the bottom of the ebrains.eu website, support at and please use it because uh, this is important for, for, for you and it's important for, for us in, in the project. Do that. I can just second that as a member of High Level Support Team. You can send an email to support at ebrains.eu or support at humanbrainproject.eu so it will come into the same system. And for you, it will be also interesting to hear the talk about HPC later today. Yeah. So thank you very much, Jan. Uh, yeah, okay, we have time for one more question, maybe. Um, um, my question is, um, um, if you make experiments with robots in real time, mm -hmm. you need a very fast connection to the platform. Mm -hmm. If you want to study learning or others, uh, do you think there is any possibility one day to uh, do this? The links today are terribly slow. Uh -huh. Well, um, what I can say, we for sure have the competence in the room to answer the question. <laughs> um, um, well, uh, I guess you're bringing up the question, how much do you want to bring processes together at one location and how much can you distribute? Yeah. Exactly. Well, my, the, the general answer to these challenges, the way I see it, is that we will do as much as we can using all these slower connections, but we have to realize what cannot be done with those slower connections where you have to, to, to bring everything to the same location. A little bit in parallel with the situation with very large data sets, we, we do want to bring the tools and services to the data sets, and that's why we want to have them located at places where there is uh, computing power, so we don't rely on all these, uh, all these traffic, so to speak. So 
depending on where you are along the timeline regarding technology developments, I would say.